In this lecture, we're going to discuss the digestive system, but the first thing we need to talk about is what's the general uh, function of the digestive system. And so whenever we consume food, what, we want to, what we're trying to do there is to extract the nutrients that are there. And whatever is that we don't need, that's what we eliminate. And the first, the first thing to start this process is a process known as um, digestion. And so there are two main uh, processes for digestion. So you have mechanical and chemical digestion. So mechanical digestion is just um, whenever we you know, chew the food, um, we're breaking it apart. And so um, that, the term for that is known as mastication. And so uh, as we're chewing this food, it turns into what's known as a bolus. And this bolus is what travels through the esophagus. So here you can see the esophagus. And um, towards the terminal end of the esophagus is, so the stomach sits like this. And so uh, once it reaches here into the stomach, that bolus turns into a mixture. And this mixture is known as chyme. And so chyme is formed based off of uh, the secretions Within the uh, within the epithelium of of the stomach, uh, so within that epithelium, that we have uh, different cells that secrete. Um, so, for instance, mucus, uh, hydrochloric acid is also secreted from there. There are also uh, uh, precursors that help to uh, cleave uh, proteins, and there are also some hormones that are found that and secreted here within uh, within the stomach, and so. What, what happens is we, we get this mixture of chyme, and from this chyme, it's gonna get transported uh, into the small intestine. And so the first part of the small intestine is the duodenum. So that's what is here. And so uh, earlier I mentioned that the hydrochloric acid is what's uh, secreted within the stomach. So that just means that it's really acidic. And so in order, to, um, in order to neutralize that really uh, acidic, the strong acid, hydrochloric acid, we uh, have what's known as um, bicarbonate. And bicarbonate is found within um, pancreatic juice. And so this organ here, this is the pancreas, and this right here is known as the pancreatic duct. So this here is the pancreatic duct, which uh, secretes the pancreatic juice into the duodenum. And so as we're eating that food, um, we need to neutralize that stomach acid, but then also, you know, let's say you go, to the, you go to the Chinese buffet and you eat a real big meal. Well, um, all of that fat that's in there has to be broken apart. And uh, the term is described, we emulsify the fat or we, we break it apart. And what helps, to, uh, helps with this process is what's known as bile and so bile bile is produced by the liver and as it's produced by the liver it's then stored within the gallbladder so um, once we have that real real fatty meal um, that gall but the gallbladder is going to release um, it's going to release the bile and it's going to travel through this region here so this region is known as the cystic duct. So you have the cystic duct here, and then um, the cystic duct, and this part is known as the hepatic duct, the common hepatic duct. That's what merges at this point. And so this point is known as the common bile duct. So you have the common bile duct here, and it goes all the way down through here. So this is the backside of the pancreas. So that common bile duct is coming all the way down here. And it's then emptying here into the duodenum. So we have a couple different secretions. We have the pancreatic juice coming from here, getting emptied into the duodenum to neutralize the stomach acid. And then we also have the bile, which is coming from here into the duodenum. Okay. And what controls the release of these fluids is um, a region that's more or less posterior back here. And it's known as the hepatopancreatic ampulla. So the hepatopancreatic ampulla and sphincter. So uh, sphincters uh, open and close, and that's what helps to um, prevent, you know, 
opens and closes to prevent fluid from going in and out so we can control that. Uh, so that's what's there. Um, this also is an accessory uh, pancreatic duct. So that kind of just branches off of the, the pancreatic duct. Okay, so we've talked about um, it turns into chyme and from the small intestine, it's gonna go through, um, it's gonna go through this model here. And this is, so all of this is the small intestine. And then this part that's on the outside, this is the, the large intestine. And so that chyme is gonna travel through here and then uh, eventually get into the large intestine. But like I've said that we need to absorb nutrients. And so how does that happen? Well, um, within the small intestines, uh, that's where the capillaries are found. And so what those capillaries do is um, they absorb the nutrients um, that, that pass through. And then from there, we need to transport it back to the liver. And in order for us to get it back to the liver, we have to uh, pass through what's known as the hepatic portal vein. So this here is the hepatic portal vein. And earlier, I showed this, the, the pancreas, right? And so this is the hepatic portal vein because it's coming all the way up. And you can see it here on the backside. So the hepatic portal vein receives um, blood from a variety of structures. It receives blood from the spleen, or here, from the spleen, from the pancreas, uh, and then also from the intestines. Because the way that this sits, it sits here in, this, in the torso model. So this sits here in the torso model, and then this side of the liver right here sits like this. So then once I take it back off, you can see that it's coming up, and then it's getting processed uh, here in the liver. Okay. So um, now that we know like the general processes and you know why all this stuff needs to happen, let's go over some of the um, anatomy. So let's start off with the stomach. So this first part of the stomach, uh, so this is the um, this is the esophagus and this is the cardia, the cardia is the opening. And this top part, the base, is known as the uh, fundus. So you have the fundus, and then this is the body of the body of the stomach. And then this terminal end is known as the um, pylorus. So you have the pylorus, and then this region right here is known as the pyloric antrum. So antrum means uh, cave, so it's kind of cave-like. And then um, pylorus means the gatekeeper, right? Because it's the gatekeeper in order to get into the small intestine. Uh, so some of the other features of the stomach, you have the greater and the lesser curvature. All right, so. Not too many structures here with the stomach, but let's move on to the next one. Okay, so um, let's do the pancreas. So with the pancreas, you have the tail, the, the body, and then this is the, the head of the pancreas. And we've already identified the ampulla, and um, uh, this is known as the um, papilla here for the, that's here within the duodenum. So yeah. Um, so let's go to this one. So now let's go to the liver. So the liver, you have the right lobe and the left lobe. And then if I turn it this way, this we've already identified the gallbladder. So it's uh, this here is the quadrate lobe. This is the caudate lobe. This is the uh, inferior vena cava. Once again, this is the hepatic portal vein. And this here is the hepatic proper artery. And so the difference between the hepatic proper artery versus the hepatic portal vein, so the hepatic proper artery is uh, its main function it, where um, supplying oxygenated blood to the liver. But for the hepatic portal vein, what we're uh, really trying to get from there is the nutrients, right? So um, when I say when I say nutrients, what I'm talking about are the macromolecules. So, for instance, um, carbohydrates, proteins, and um, also fats. So that's what we want to get here into um, the hepatic portal vein. Okay. 
so some of the other features of the liver. So this is the falciform uh, ligament, and this here is the uh, round ligament. Okay. So now moving on here to my um, intestine model. Uh, the second part of the small intestine is known as the jejunum, which is here. So the jejunum, and then the last part is the ileum, so that's here. So this part in here is known as the ileocecal valve. So you have the ileocecal valve, so this is the cecum, and then going upwards, this is the ascending colon, this is the transverse colon, and this is the descending colon. From here on the back side, we have the sigmoid colon, and this here is the rectum. Uh, some of the other features here, we have the tinea coli, which is this. This is the tinea coli. Um, the appendix is also back here. And then the epiploic appendage, appendages, that's what these are. These are the epiploic appendages. And these individual pouches, these are known as the hostrum. The hostrum. Oh, and then here on the back side, uh, that's still the first part of the small intestine, which is known as the duodenum. All right. Liver. Okay. A couple of the other uh, features. Um, so I talked about mechanical digestion and um, mastication, but Another um, aspect is chemical digestion. And so um, some of the glands that uh, secrete, uh, so for instance, um, amylase, which helps to um, digest, break down starch, uh, is that's what's secreted from the, uh, the different glands. So this is the parotid gland. And then uh, here, on, here on my torso model, this is the sublingual gland and then this is the submandibular because it's below the mandible. And so that's it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this lecture. Uh, make sure to like and subscribe. <laughs>